Welcome to Just Stories, we hope you enjoy the story. The Clash of Empires, The Crimean War, by Just Stories. Chapter 1, The Seeds of Conflict, The Ottoman Empire and Imperial Russia in the 19th Century. In the early 19th century, the Ottoman Empire and Imperial Russia were two of the world's largest empires, with vast territories stretching from Europe to Asia. However, despite their size, both empires were facing significant challenges as they struggled to maintain their power and influence. The Ottoman Empire, which had been in decline for centuries, was facing increasing pressure from European powers who were vying for control of key trade routes in the Middle East and Mediterranean. Meanwhile, Imperial Russia, which had long been expanding its territory through conquest and colonization, was facing its own challenges as it sought to establish itself as a major player in the region. One of the key flashpoints in the growing rivalry between the Ottoman Empire and Imperial Russia was the Balkans, a region that had long been contested by both empires. The Ottoman Empire had ruled over much of the Balkans since the 14th century, but by the 19th century, its grip on the region was slipping as various nationalist movements emerged. Imperial Russia saw an opportunity in the instability of the Balkans and began to support these nationalist movements, hoping to gain influence in the region and weaken the Ottoman Empire. At the same time, Imperial Russia was also eyeing the Black Sea a key strategic waterway that would provide access to warm water ports and the Mediterranean. The Ottoman Empire, aware of Imperial Russia's ambitions, began to look for allies of its own. In 1833, it signed the Treaty of Unkarskalesi with Imperial Russia, which allowed Russian warships to pass through the Bosporus and Dardanelles Straits and provided a measure of protection for the Ottoman Empire against other European powers. However, this alliance was short-lived. In the 1840s, tensions began to escalate between the two empires over the Holy Land, which was home to many Christian shrines and pilgrimage sites. Both the Ottoman Empire and Imperial Russia claimed to be the protector of Christian interests in the region, leading to a bitter dispute that threatened to spill over into armed conflict. In 1852, the Ottoman Empire made a controversial move that further inflamed tensions with Imperial Russia. It granted France, another major European power, the right to protect Catholic interests in the Holy Land, effectively sidelining Imperial Russia and damaging its prestige in the region. These tensions came to a head in 1853, when Imperial Russia invaded the Danubian principalities in an attempt to exert its influence over the region. The Ottoman Empire, with the backing of France and Britain, declared war on Imperial Russia, thus beginning the Crimean War. The seeds of the conflict had been sown long before the war actually began. The rivalry between the Ottoman Empire and Imperial Russia over the Balkans, the Black Sea, and the Holy Land had been simmering for decades, and tensions had been steadily building. In the end, it was a clash of empires that would have far-reaching consequences for Europe and the Middle East, and shaped the geopolitical landscape for years to come. Chapter 2 The War Begins Diplomacy and Military Campaigns the outbreak of the Crimean War in 1853 was the result of a complex web of diplomatic and military maneuvers, with multiple powers jostling for influence in the region. At the heart of the conflict was the question of the rights of Christian minorities in the Ottoman Empire, which had been a source of tension between the Ottoman Empire and Imperial Russia for years. In 1853, the Russian Empire sent a fleet to the Ottoman port of Sinop in modern-day Turkey, where it bombarded and destroyed the Ottoman fleet. This move prompted the Ottoman Empire to declare war on Russia, with the backing of France and Britain, in order to protect its sovereignty and territorial integrity. The early months of the war were marked by a series of military campaigns and skirmishes in various parts of the region. In October 1853, a joint Ottoman-French force attacked the Russian fortress of Kinburn on the Black Sea, but the assault was repulsed. In November, the Ottoman Empire declared a jihad, or holy war, against Russia in an attempt to rally Muslim support. Meanwhile, in the Crimean Peninsula, Russian forces had besieged the Ottoman fortress of Kars, while Ottoman forces had besieged the Russian fortress of Silistra. These two sieges would eventually come to an end in January 1854, with both sides emerging victorious. The major European powers, wary of the growing conflict, began to take steps to try to defuse the situation. 
In March 1854, they convened a peace conference in Vienna, but the talks quickly broke down due to a lack of trust between the parties. In April 1854, Britain and France declared war on Russia, officially entering the conflict on the side of the Ottoman Empire. The decision was motivated in part by a desire to prevent Russian expansionism and maintain the balance of power in Europe. The entry of Britain and France into the conflict marked a turning point in the war, as their superior military technology and resources gave them an advantage over the Russian Empire. In September 1854, a joint British-French force landed at Kalamata Bay in the Crimea, with the aim of capturing the Russian naval base at Sevastopol. The ensuing siege of Sevastopol would become the most important military theater of the war, lasting for over a year and resulting in heavy casualties on both sides. The siege was characterized by new military technologies, including the extensive use of rifled artillery and the construction of trenches and fortifications. In the end, the Allied forces were successful in capturing Sevastopol in September 1855, dealing a major blow to the Russian Empire and setting the stage for the end of the war. The conflict officially ended in February 1856 with the signing of the Treaty of Paris, which imposed harsh terms on the defeated Russian Empire and marked the beginning of a new era of European diplomacy. The war had been a long and bloody conflict, marked by shifting alliances, technological innovations, and diplomatic maneuvering. It had also been a turning point in the history of Europe, marking the end of an era of great power politics and the beginning of a new era of cooperation and diplomacy. Chapter 3 The Struggle for Control The Siege of Sevastopol The Siege of Sevastopol, which began in September 1854 and lasted for over a year, was the defining military theater of the Crimean War. The port city of Sevastopol was a key naval base for the Russian Empire on the Black Sea, and its capture by the Allied forces was essential to their ultimate victory. The siege was marked by a series of major battles and skirmishes, as well as prolonged periods of trench warfare and artillery bombardment. The Allied forces, made up of British, French, and Ottoman troops, were up against a determined and well-equipped Russian army, and progress was slow and difficult. The first major battle of the siege took place on September 20, 1854, when the Allied forces launched a surprise attack on the Russian positions at the Alma River. The battle was hard fought, but the Allies emerged victorious, paving the way for their advance towards Sevastopol. In October 1854, the Allied forces began a naval bombardment of Sevastopol, hoping to weaken the Russian defenses before launching a full-scale assault. The Russian defenders, however, were well prepared and had constructed extensive fortifications, making progress slow and difficult. As the siege dragged on, both sides began to suffer from a lack of supplies and resources. The Allied forces struggled to maintain their lines of communication and supply, while the Russian defenders faced food and ammunition shortages. In January 1855, the Allies launched a major assault on the Malakov Kurgan, a key strategic position overlooking Sevastopol. The battle was fierce and bloody, with the Russian defenders fighting tooth and nail to hold their ground. In the end, however, the Allies emerged victorious, capturing the position and dealing a significant blow to the Russian defenders. Despite this setback, the Russian forces continued to hold out, launching a series of counterattacks in an attempt to break the Allied lines. The siege continued throughout the spring and summer of 1855, with both sides suffering heavy casualties and making little progress. Finally, in September 1855, the Allied forces launched a final assault on Sevastopol after months of careful planning and preparation. The assault was successful, and the Russian defenders were forced to withdraw from the city. The Allied forces had finally achieved their objective, and the siege of Sevastopol was over. The siege of Sevastopol was a long and grueling campaign, marked by fierce battles, trench warfare, and extensive use of new military technologies. It was also a turning point in the Crimean War, as the capture of Sevastopol marked a major victory for the Allied forces and dealt a significant blow to the Russian Empire. The siege also had lasting effects on the military tactics and strategies of the major powers, as the extensive use of trenches and fortifications foreshadowed the trench warfare that would characterize the First World War. 
Ultimately, the siege of Sevastopol was a testament to the bravery and determination of the soldiers on both sides, and a key moment in the history of European warfare. Chapter 4 The Great Powers Enter the Fray France, Britain, and the Ottoman Empire The Crimean War began as a conflict between the Ottoman Empire and the Russian Empire, but it quickly drew in the major European powers as they sought to protect their interests and prevent Russian expansionism. Among these powers, France, Britain, and the Ottoman Empire played particularly significant roles in the conflict. France's entry into the war was driven in part by its desire to protect Catholic interests in the Holy Land. The Ottoman Empire, which controlled Jerusalem and other important Christian sites, had granted France the right to protect Catholic interests in the region in 1852. When the conflict between the Ottoman Empire and Imperial Russia escalated in 1853, France saw an opportunity to protect its interests and gain influence in the region. In January 1854, France sent a naval expedition to the Black Sea, where it joined forces with the Ottoman Empire and launched a successful attack on the Russian fortress of Bomarsund in the Åland Islands. Later that year, France sent a large expeditionary force to the Crimean Peninsula, which would play a major role in the siege of Sevastopol. Britain's entry into the war was motivated by a desire to prevent Russian expansionism and maintain the balance of power in Europe. Britain had long been wary of Russian ambitions in the region, particularly with regard to its access to warm water ports and the Mediterranean. When the Ottoman Empire declared war on Russia in October 1853, Britain saw an opportunity to protect its interests and prevent Russian dominance in the region. In March 1854, a British fleet led by Admiral Sir Charles Napier arrived in the Black Sea, where it joined forces with the French and Ottoman fleets. Together, the Allied fleet launched a series of attacks on Russian ports and fortresses along the Black Sea coast. The Ottoman Empire's role in the war was, of course, central. The Ottoman Empire had been at odds with Imperial Russia for decades, and the dispute over the rights of Christian minorities in the Ottoman Empire had been a key factor in the outbreak of war. The Ottoman Empire had initially struggled against the Russian Empire, but with the backing of France and Britain, it was able to hold its own and eventually emerge victorious. The Ottoman Empire played a key role in the siege of Sevastopol, providing troops and resources to the Allied forces. Ottoman troops fought alongside British and French soldiers in some of the bloodiest battles of the siege, and their contributions were essential to the eventual victory. The involvement of France, Britain, and the Ottoman Empire in the Crimean War marked a major turning point in the history of European diplomacy and military strategy. The war was no longer a conflict between two great empires, but rather a complex web of alliances and rivalries between the major powers of Europe. It was a sign of the changing nature of power politics in the region, and a harbinger of the conflicts that would shape the 20th century. Chapter 5 The Human Cost, Medical Care, Casualties, and War Journalism The Crimean War was a long and bloody conflict, marked by high casualties and poor medical care for wounded soldiers. It was also a war that saw the emergence of new forms of journalism as reporters from around the world began to cover the conflict and expose the harsh realities of war. One of the most significant issues facing soldiers on both sides of the conflict was the poor state of medical care. Hospitals were often overcrowded and under-equipped, with little access to basic medical supplies or trained staff. The wounded often suffered from infections and other complications, and many died from their injuries. In response to these challenges, a group of pioneering nurses led by Florence Nightingale set up field hospitals and worked tirelessly to improve the conditions for wounded soldiers. Nightingale and her team of nurses provided much-needed medical care and comfort to soldiers, and their efforts helped to transform the way in which medical care was provided on the battlefield. The casualties of the Crimean War were high, with estimates ranging from 400,000 to over a million people killed or wounded. The majority of casualties were soldiers, but civilians were also caught up in the conflict, with many losing their homes and livelihoods as a result of the fighting. The war also had a significant impact on the mental health of soldiers, with many experiencing trauma and psychological distress as a result of their experiences on the battlefield. 
These issues were not well understood at the time, and many soldiers received little support or treatment for their mental health issues. The Crimean War was also notable for the emergence of war journalism, as reporters from around the world began to cover the conflict and send back reports to their home countries. These reports exposed the harsh realities of war and the challenges facing soldiers and civilians alike. Perhaps the most famous of these war correspondents was William Howard Russell, a reporter for the Times of London. Russell's dispatches from the front lines of the war helped to shape public opinion about the conflict and exposed the failures of military leadership and medical care. The human cost of the Crimean War was high, and it had a significant impact on the soldiers and civilians caught up in the conflict. However, the war also saw the emergence of new forms of medical care and journalism, which would help to shape the way in which future conflicts were fought and reported. Chapter 6, The Aftermath, Diplomatic Consequences, and Lasting Legacies The Crimean War was a long and bloody conflict that had significant diplomatic consequences and lasting legacies. The war marked the end of an era of great power politics in Europe and the beginning of a new era of cooperation and diplomacy. One of the most significant diplomatic consequences of the war was the impact it had on the balance of power in Europe. The defeat of the Russian Empire in the war weakened its position in the region and marked the beginning of a decline in its power and influence. Meanwhile, the Ottoman Empire, with the backing of France and Britain, emerged as a major player in the region and was able to maintain its territorial integrity. The Treaty of Paris, signed in 1856, imposed harsh terms on the defeated Russian Empire, including the cession of territory and the payment of reparations. The treaty also established a new system of international law, which helped to shape the way in which future conflicts were resolved. The Crimean War also had lasting legacies in terms of military strategy and tactics. The extensive use of trenches and fortifications during the siege of Sevastopol foreshadowed the trench warfare that would characterize the First World War. The war also saw the introduction of new military technologies, including rifled artillery and steam-powered warships, which would have a significant impact on future conflicts. Perhaps the most significant legacy of the Crimean War was the impact it had on public opinion and the emergence of a new form of journalism. The reports of war correspondents like William Howard Russell exposed the harsh realities of war and helped to shape public opinion about the conflict. These reports also helped to establish a new era of war journalism, which would have a significant impact on the way in which future conflicts were reported. The Crimean War was a long and bloody conflict that had significant consequences for Europe and the wider world. It marked the end of an era of great power politics and the beginning of a new era of cooperation and diplomacy. The war also had lasting legacies in terms of military strategy and tactics and the emergence of a new form of journalism. In many ways, the Crimean War set the stage for the conflicts and challenges that would shape the 20th century and beyond. Thank you for watching our video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. So you don't miss out on our next story.